I want to establish my brokerage firm. I don't know about, have you heard about this city called Mysore, which is uh, uh, hardly about 200 kilometers from Bangalore, which is a heritage city. They have a lot of palaces, castles, and things like wow. that. So we want to establish uh, in niche uh, cities like this. Wow, that's super impressive. And I'm definitely going to be uh, asking you for a little bit more information on that other city you mentioned with all the castles and palaces. I want to, uh, you know, learn more about that. <laughs> so um, after, after our call here. Um, but all right, guys, welcome back to the Free Life Agents podcast. I have a very special guest today joining us all the way from across the Pacific Ocean on the other side of the world uh, from India. And he is a, a really good, uh, a good example of a great real estate agent and a great businessman, uh, no matter where you are in the world. And I'm super excited to have him share some of his experiences with you uh, in real estate in his market, and as well as some of the things that he is going to be doing a little bit differently when it comes to differentiating himself uh, in his market. But without further ado, guys, uh, welcome to the show, Balaji. Balaji, welcome. Uh, it's really great to have you here. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Kobe. It's really exciting uh, to be a part of this show. And uh, I really thank you for your time. And uh, I think I'd be worthwhile uh, for whomever is listening or watching this. Thanks again. Yeah. Yeah, no problem at all. Thank you for your time uh, as well. I know you're super busy uh, being the owner of your own uh, real estate company. And I think that's a really good place to start is kind of giving us, uh, you know, those who don't know you, you know, you have a big presence on YouTube, and we're going to get to that a little bit later. But for those who don't know you, can you give us just a little bit of a background on who you are, how you got started in real estate and how you got to running your own real estate company with one of the biggest brands in the world uh, right now in India? So I've been always a sales professional uh, throughout. It's been about uh, nearly about uh, two decades of my uh, career in sales. So I have started selling from, uh, you know, the pumps, the water pumps, which uh, you use it in your domestic uh, to pump your water from uh, the ground zero to your overhead tank. So I was selling those kinds of pumps. And then I shifted my career to uh, the LED projectors, which you uh, project you are, uh, you know, on a big screen, right? So I was selling to institutional uh, buyers and then um, uh, came the era of electronics where I kept selling uh, the printronics, the, uh, the printers, the laser printers, the inkjet printers and all those stuff. Um, then came the insurance boom and uh, I uh, joined uh, uh, a major uh, insurance private player and, uh, um, you know, started selling life insurance uh, products there. That's how I was introduced to the agency sales and, uh, you know, uh, how a freelancer sells uh, uh, and utilizes the time and, you know, uh, things like that. So I used to recruit agents and then uh, try insurance products to them. And then uh, I shifted my career to general insurance and all this. It's been about, what, about 12, 15 years of corporate, about roughly about 12 years of corporate life in all these uh, segments. And then I thought there was too much uh, you know, in the corporate life and, you know, a lot of politics and things like that. So, of course, everywhere it is. So, I uh, I tried real estate because real estate back in my uh, city, um, I, I come from uh, Bengaluru, the IT capital of India. And who doesn't know Bangalore? Uh, so, Bangalore is kind of an IT powerhouse uh, in the world next to Silicon Valley, you can say. And a lot of influx of people from all over the state. India is a very large country. So, you have uh, the North India the western, the eastern, and the southern part of India. So, you know, people started coming in from all across the state and, uh, you know, getting job placements in Bangalore. And then the ID, uh, uh, you know, outsourcing was happening on a full scale. And, uh, you know, that's that's when I thought, you know, real estate is going to be uh, next big thing in this city. And, uh, you know, a lot of people, uh, you know, started approaching me for my advice, uh, even though I was not in the real estate. But, you know, since uh, I was one of the, I was also one of the migrant guys who might say that, you know, uh, from down south, I had migrated to Bangalore for uh, the job purpose and then I got settled here. So a lot of people started asking me, you know, how is the city? Where do I make my home and things like that? So then I realized that, you know, uh, yeah, so people are seeking professional advice and uh, uh, real estate back in this uh, city, even today, it's a really unorganized uh, sector. And, uh, you know, uh, people really wanted to work with professionals and there were not much professionals uh, uh, back those days. And even I, even today, uh, it's lacking uh, professionals in this segment. So uh, then I started doing part-time real estate when I was uh, working. And then um, 
six months. Uh, my wife was uh, spearheading and she did the front end stuff and I did most of the back end stuff. And I thought, yes, this is something which uh, I think we can structure and we can give a good service and experience to the uh, clients, both the sellers and buyers. And then I got some confidence and got into real estate and was being an independent agent for quite some time, about three, four years from there. Uh, did some fabulous uh, business, but you know, my hunger for growth uh, was there. And as an independent channel on realtor, you know, your growth is limited to your time, right? So how much time you can put in, and there's hardly what 12, 14 hours of work time, which you can put uh, if at all, if, if it is for any other business like IT or any other business which involves you to be behind the computer, you can say that, yeah, I can put about 16, 18 hours a day. But in real estate, you know, uh, it's a people business, you know, as long as you can meet people uh, in a day and, uh, you know, shake hands with them, that's what the business happens. And you, this, as a standalone realtor, your growth is limited to the number of people you meet in a day and the number of time, uh, the work hours you put there. So that's when I realized that, you know, you want to start uh, looking at big volumes, big numbers and, uh, uh, you know, uh, develop a broker uh, uh, office network and uh, get more uh, partners to your sales and uh, things like that. Hence, uh, uh, I uh, zeroed in on uh, Colwell Banker, the world's largest real estate firm. And uh, luckily they were there in India uh, just before seven years. And uh, uh, I was one of the few, uh, you know, signees for them uh, for a unit franchisee here. And uh, touch wood, we are doing extremely well with whatever objective we had in mind. Yeah, well, that's wonderful, uh, Balaji. It sounds like you have a, you know a lot of experience. And um, what you said about you know having you know having a business where you know you're not just only trading your time, but you're also leveraging um, you know you're leveraging other partners and you're leveraging a brand as well is really important. And we're gonna get to that uh, in a little bit as well in your decision to kind of going with you know a national or, or international brand. But you mentioned something really interesting. Uh, as well. And it's kind of something that we, we talked about a little bit before, and that's um, the market conditions in, in India for real estate. You mentioned that there were, you know, not even a, a lot of professionals, you know, today. And, you know, you can clearly tell, you know, from the way you speak and from the way you do business that you are one of the few professionals, you know, if there are professionals out there. So like, can you just kind of shed some light for, you know, people who might not understand, you know, what's going on in the real estate market over in India and, you know, what you, what you guys are doing to be, be a lot different than they are. Sure. So any developing country and a developing city, right. It has its own problem when it comes to uh, uh, delivering uh, services, uh, in especially sectors like real estate, uh, where people don't know exactly what the laws are, the local laws or the zoning regulations and things like that. So sometimes I know in a city like uh, Bangalore, where you have the influx of uh, people coming in all over the state and the country and, um, even for that matter, some of the non-resident Indians are coming back to uh, the city to set up there or continue with their family uh, life here. Uh, so there are so many uh, gray areas where one has to uh, really understand. And then, you know, somewhere you, uh, uh, you know, the agents uh, and the attorneys and the auditors play a crucial role in terms of forming all this and educating the people and then uh, you know, guiding through them and then, uh, you know, uh, closing a deal or something. So this is something which is really time consuming and it is something which an agent has to put in a, a humongous hours of time in terms of learning all this, practicing all this, and then also delivering successfully to clients all this. I don't think so many of the agents do this here. Uh, not only here in any developing country or any developing city, this is the issue where we are plagued with uh, a uh, lot of fly-by-night operators and a lot of part-timers who are in the industry uh, who just wanted to make a quick buck. And uh, I, I can say that, you know, on a given first opportunity, they'll sacrifice you for their interest. Um, I'm not painting the uh, industry with the same brush. I'm not painting all agents, standalone agents or any brokering agency with the same paintbrush. But uh, um, you talk to any sellers, buyers today, they are very wary about talking to an agent until unless it is uh, uh, through a big uh, source, uh, a big brand or a, uh, you know, a foolproof trusted source. So uh, these are all the things which shows that, you know, the industry is uh, at lacking with professionalism. And uh, it is not uh, that, you know, uh, the industry is, the industry needs to put the uh, interest of the consumers first ahead of themselves. Uh, which is not the case even today. Although the government has uh, been proactive in terms of getting the RERA, which is uh, Real Estate Regulatory Authority, 
uh, forming a agency and uh, which trying to uh, protect the interests of the consumers. Uh, but there are very little when it comes to uh, you know uh, protecting one's interest on the resale, the pre pre owned properties in this market still a gray area. So what we do is we uh, we tend to educate uh, people through various channels. So you uh, you cannot reach out to a huge amount of people and cover everything uh, by meeting in person. So uh, we have a novel approach, like, you know, we have a robust website, we have all the information put across in the blog formats. We send out email newsletters to all of our base. And uh, we also print magazines on a monthly basis on the trending topics and the trending changing laws and things like that. Uh, I do a lot of YouTube uh, videos. Um, it's been published about close to about 200 plus videos. And uh, last year alone, we have done close to about 70 plus videos educating why, what, when, and things like that. So I think this is, these are all the uh, small, simple steps which we take to protect uh, the consumer's interest in this segment. And hence, we are very, very different uh, from others because a standalone agent might not have the scale to do all this uh, probably, um, you know, uh, which we have uh, done it with the help of uh, a team, which we have put across a team and then we have partners. And so we have a scale, we are able to do it and we have done it. And uh, this uh, shows that, you know, the kind of uh, uh, validation due diligence and uh, education, which we put across to our clients ensures that there is going to be a uh, uh, great uh, trans transaction. Uh, when it comes to transaction, there is a great traction and it's very smooth. Yeah. And I can really tell, especially from your, you know, your YouTube presence as well. And maybe you can kind of tell us a little bit more about, you know, your idea for going to video marketing and why you decided that, um, you know, video marketing was the best way for you guys to go. Yeah, sure. So um, as I'm part of the brand Coldwell Banker, so uh, every year I used to visit US for a convention. I've been fortunate to attend a couple of conventions like this past just before COVID because last two years, mm -hmm. there's been no much uh, travel. So 2017 was my first uh, visit to US uh, Vegas where it happened. And uh, I was, uh, you know, take, I was really blown away by the uh, the workshops, the breakaway sessions and the network with the global uh, agents and uh, the best practices, I met some exciting, uh, you know, um, I was introduced to some exciting people from uh, places like uh, Beverly Hills, Colorado, uh, New Jersey, uh, Florida, uh, uh, you know, all these places like, you know, even from Canada, Dubai, and uh, really a complete diverse uh, background and the kind of uh, products which they sell back, like, you know, homes, um, plazas, and so many other stuff, which... Uh, uh, what are the best practices? Uh, what are the best uh, available opportunities? How do we present yourself? What are the ways to do it? So uh, these are all the things which uh, I think uh, I was introduced during the 2017. This is something which is world-class, which, uh, as I said, uh, Kobe, uh, real estate is a very, very unorganized here. And it's you, you talk about training. There is no such training here for real estate in India. So... Uh, then suddenly you got exposed to a world-class training like uh, uh, the Coral Bankers Convention. It's, they call it as GenBlue uh, Convention. Uh, it was mind-boggling. So uh, to, just to give a, a simple sample of what I have learned, there was even a workshop of how to, sh how to shoot using your iPhone or a mobile phone, right? So there was a couple of hours of session only on that. So your complete perspective of shooting a property or uh, putting yourself on a tripod and talking in front of the camera, uh, complete perception changed. And from there, I started, uh, you know, taking some cues from there and started implementing, did some experiments. And then, uh, you know, that's how I think uh, we are not mastered it yet, but okay, we are doing something, you know, back here, which uh, whatever learnings I've got. So 2017 uh, is the workshops, which whatever I learned, I've tried to complete, you know, come and implement and, Whatever, and the next, I think 2019, I, I, we, I again came back to Vegas. Again, there was a, a convention. This time it was all uh, companies, all across uh, the companies of Rheology and all these massive turnout of about 6,000 people came all across the globe again from different, different companies now, not only from Coldwell Banker, from various other companies, uh, which uh, Rheology, uh, which are part of Rheology. And uh, I think uh, this is where the follow on learnings happen. And uh, uh, especially I follow people like Christoph Chu, who uh, 
who started doing videos in a very very early stage uh, with just uh, you know he used to say that you know uh, I I didn't even know what is a video camera so I had to go to my local video shop and purchase a camera which had the flip uh, screen right so where you see uh, you just flip it and put it across and so that's how you know uh, he started doing it and it started following with all his uh, social media page and things like you know just cop, cop, uh, you know copycat so nothing else nothing uh, uh, whatever the, these top agents used to do just copycat and just implement back to uh, what is culturally fit uh, in my market yeah i think you're really humble because um for those that don't know your youtube channel has close to 8000 subscribers which is you know it's a substantial substantial goal that not a lot of people can hit so i mean first of all congratulations on that and um i think it's really it's really cool that you guys are, are doing that as a way to separate yourself um in the market like you said you guys have a different professional standard and with that you know i think what a lot of it and a lot of what video does is, is trust i mean is that something that you've seen is that have you seen people who you know either talk to you as an agent before and then they've seen your videos and then they decided to use you as their you know as their agent or, you know, somebody who's come, come across your videos online. And because of that, you know, decided to, you know, work with you guys in order for their real estate transactions in India. Absolutely. So, uh, as I said, uh, you know, this is a developing city and it's kind of exploding. Real estate is exploding. And uh, having said that, uh, uh, there are huge amount of people who have also left the city for various reasons, you know, especially to us, Canada and all these areas and, maybe probably to different other states as well. So what has happened is all these people need some kind of a connection. So uh, they need uh, what is happening uh, back in their hometown. What is happening? What is, how do I stay in touch? Uh, either to subscribe for a newsletter or to follow a certain blog and, uh, you know, uh, to go through a video and things like that. So there was not much uh, enough contents uh, was delivered uh, from the city back to such audiences. And people who wanted to buy and sell and they're on the fence and they don't visit it yet, but they just wanted to follow the industry, how it's going and what's happening. And all this, all these are all the audiences. And uh, I was like, you know, doing everything myself. Uh, as I told you, you know, 2017, I attended this workshop and I wanted to do something and I came back and started doing and I only used to write the blogs and I used to convert those into the videos, put that uh, into, uh, put my mobile phone on the tripod. And I was struggling with all the audio issues and the, uh, I used to really get frustrated when I uh, started doing editings and all. So uh, this is how I started doing. So what I first understand, what is the actual search intent? So what people are really expecting? So what are the FAQs? What, what they wanted to uh, get an answer for? So this is, so uh, this is something, you know, very, very simple topics like, you know, uh, uh, why, why, how, what are things to look for before even buying uh, an apartment, right? So these are all the simple topics which I came up with. And uh, yeah, so to answer your question, yes, people wanted to hear you. They wanted to know you. Uh, they wanted to see you, how you look like before even talking to you on the phone. So a video uh, will help. And especially a video published on YouTube is going to definitely help because the uh, Shelf life is more on YouTube than the other social media like Facebook or Instagram because it's going to be buried under so many thousands of other uh, shots or reels or other videos. But YouTube is searchable, right? So this is where people search, um, you know, um, what to do. I have a property to sell. What are the things to understand? So um, fortunately, YouTube suggests my video or my video based on the SEO. It gets clicked and, uh, you know, people know who I am and then they start directly writing emails to me or calling me and uh, believe me every day I get a call from uh, all these people that sometimes it's annoying also because very small small issues also they call you uh, but uh, you know that's the cost of uh, you going uh, public right so uh, there's no regret for it yeah I mean that's how that's how I found you is uh, on, your, on your YouTube video so I mean you're definitely doing something right that you know I'm finding you over in you know, a different country you know, looking for, looking for different real estate experts in India. So, you know, it's really good on you for, for taking it and being a, I would say an early adopter of that. And when it comes to, when it comes to YouTube, you mentioned something interesting and it's, it's interesting to me because I'm also um, into SEO. I write a, I write a blog uh, as well. So I'm, 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 I'm familiar with how SEO works. So, I mean, I'm kind of curious, like, you know, how long did it kind of take you when it, to figure out SEO or, you know, what was kind of, your idea when it came to search engine optimization and how are you doing it when it comes to partnering 
pairing your blog and the same content with your video content as well? Sure. So it all happened uh, thanks to COVID uh, because we were logged we were locked down inside our own home for about a couple of months. This wasn't the first wave between, uh, I think, uh, between March and uh, of 2020 uh, to April end. So uh, there was so many stuff I was experimenting with because you're only limited to your laptop and, uh, you know, uh, your video cameras. So, so I was doing videos. I was doing, you know, I was looking at my own website, what and all I can do. I started following several, you know, uh, personalities in this uh, uh, segment. To name a few like uh, Neil Patel, uh, Eric Su. Uh, so these guys are, uh, you know, kind of uh, masters in SEO when it comes to SEO. So then I introspected my website, you know, is it uh, in line with the global standards? Is it something which is uh, really user friendly and people, uh, are they able to find me? So I only tried to find my website, I couldn't be able to find. So I thought, you know, this is something which is, uh, which we need to work on. So at that time, I didn't have any support staff or anybody. So I had to learn everything SEO. I I really don't, didn't know what SEO meant. So then I had to learn a complete. I had to, uh, I had to learn everything from scratch and watch uh, you know hundreds of hours of videos on SEOs and then started uh, working with my developer, the website developer, uh, to uh, completely revamp the website on SEO friendly and then uh, collect across a team quickly recruit uh, resources. Uh, I recruit a content manager because I realized that you know as I said earlier. Um, it's really frustrating when you are doing everything yourself, right? So sales and marketing are two different stuff. So uh, you you do yourself the content, you talk yourself in front of the camera, you edit and you publish and you then you follow on. It's, it's totally frustrating. Initially, it's okay. You need to learn all this stuff. But when you have to scale up, this certainly will not help you. Your core job is to sell, go out and sell. So then I started uh, putting across a team and, uh, you know, started recruiting content manager, uh, a content writer, then uh, an SEO specialist, and then uh, a media specialist who does all my videos today. All my all the videos which you see on YouTube is done by this guy who shoots uh, the video, edits them, puts graphics on it, and then publishes uh, it. So uh, this uh, thanks to COVID. So this is where uh, we were able to put across the resource and then I was the guy who used to understand what is the search uh, uh, volumes for specific market like us and what are people are looking for and how do we incorporate those things into the website? What are the content requirements and things like that, blah, 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 blah. Create a complete uh, master uh, file for the keywords and then just keep following it, keep putting it across. And uh, this is where we are today and uh, we are able to uh, satisfy the uh, search, uh, uh, satisfy the searches in terms of uh, what exactly they wanted, we are able to deliver to our website. And uh, to answer your question, uh, so uh, when we started this, when I started this in the month of uh, April, 2020, I had hardly about 500, 600 uh, visitors a month. Uh, today, uh, I just presented to my team a couple of uh, days before. So I think uh, we are hitting close to about 15,000 uh, visitors a month. So this is about uh, roughly about, you can say about 1.5 years. Uh, so all the hard work is paying off and today we, we, we are getting tons of enquiries, which we are unable to answer. And it's very sad for us to say that, you know, no to so many of them. <laughs> yeah. And that's, that's, that's a good, it's a good problem to have, right? When your, your website is so popular on search engines now that yeah. it's hard to even keep up with them. <laughs> so, but yeah, I mean, I think it's, it's really cool that you're doing that. So when it comes to, when you're telling us that, uh, you know, you have a content manager for YouTube as well. So does that mean like, and, and this is a completely like everybody has a different workflow, but does that mean they come up with all the ideas or are you the person coming up with the ideas and they're the ones who are planning it uh, and then you, you do the videos? Okay, so it all starts with the, the content writer. So uh, what task which we need to give to a content uh, starts with, uh, are we going to match the searcher's intent, right? So it all boils down to the search intent. So are we having enough volume for the particular topic which we are going to, because earlier I had done videos uh, uh, which has not got enough views, but the topic was excellent. But I figured out that uh, there are no uh, demand for such topics. So that means, you know, it's absolutely a waste of time doing, okay, it might enthuse a couple of people, but so your time should not be wasted on, you know, uh, only for those two people. So it should be for a sizable amount of people. So I, that doesn't mean that it's a 1 million view or 2 million view. So we, 
we are not in an entertainment industry so we are in an industry where uh, uh, those who are really genuinely concerned about uh, buying selling leasing uh, or allied uh, segments only those people are going to glue to your uh, videos and wanted to subscribe to your channel so having said that uh, the base uh, of any of our uh, uh, resource planning is uh, search intent so are we going to meet uh, the are we going to meet and satisfy the search intent and have are we having enough volume so what we do is uh, we sit across as a team once in a quarter uh, three months uh, ahead we plan all the keywords let it be because youtube and google has two different uh, set of uh, volume uh, right traffic right so it's not going to what traffic you're going to get the google uh, in google's uh, you're not going to get the same uh, volume in youtube it's going to be totally different so we will plan that in advance and uh, we will uh, you know put across uh, certain uh, uh, keywords into topical authority keywords and uh, you know have branched out different topics from that particular master keyword and then that's how we keep enhancing and improvising on uh, certain topics so once the topics are uh, formed then the content writer starts writing the content and then uh, of course those contents will be repurposed back into a podcast as an audio file and uh, um if it is a video worthy we will do a video and then uh, it of course goes into a blog and sometimes certain contents we use only as a guest post and certain contents for pr related stuff and things like that yeah and that's that's really interesting that you mentioned that because a lot of people who are doing content a lot of agents who are doing content are not able to get found because they're very good at you know like you said they have exceptional topics but there's no search intent for it and there's no search intent for it you know, you can't get you can't get funded you're wasting your time you know putting that content out there because it's not a value nobody's actually looking for it so that brings us to like a, an interesting question i had and something we kind of talked about uh, earlier as well is you know who is your biggest customer base because you know as you know we all know india is a, a big market it's a market on the uh, on the up it's going up so who is your niche customer base when it comes to real estate uh, transactions in india so kobe so i am always a seller's agent so that doesn't mean that i will not work with buyers so back in my city uh, back in india there is no regulation that uh, you have to work with only one set of clients like you know either be a buyer's agent or a seller's agent it's not like that you can work with both a both the uh, type of uh, you know clients uh, but uh, uh, i have been specifically working with sellers uh, ever since we have signed up with uh, this brand it's been about 7 years and it's really paying off uh, really well because uh um, uh the kind of uh, market which i'm into is like you know the premium and luxury segment so anything in the prime spots of the city uh, i am the guy so i i can take up anything right you know at, you know a, a, a structure which which needs to be knock, knocked out and rebuilt or a open open lot or an apartment or anything which is in the prime spot i am the man and if it's not on the prime i only undertake luxury properties you know sweeping views an apartment or a condo which has a sweeping views or a uniquely designed independent bungalow or a multiple residential uh, dwelling you know something like that yeah so having said that so who are all the sellers in this uh, market so the sellers are predominantly uh, people who are upgraded themselves or uh, the second thing is they want to downsize so why they want to downsize you know they have been in this property for about 30 40 years and uh the children have grown up either they're not staying with their uh, family you know their parents or they have moved abroad and they are just looking to downsize the independent properties and uh, move to a gated uh, society uh, or a condo or things like that so uh this is my uh, uh major uh, clientele i would say this is the target segment which i am so i work with sellers and i work with more of a independent property than a condo and um, anything to do with people who are not in the city and who wants a real uh, you know kind of uh, solution uh, from a to z kind of a solution when it comes to selling their uh, property that's 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 where i'm good at yeah and yeah, you are really good at it as well and it's i think it's really impressive that you can be able to position yourself as a uh, exclusive sellers agent in a market where you know you know in the us we have you know these ex- you know exclusive listing agreements where you know a seller has to list with one agent i believe that is not the case in india so the fact that your entire business is built off of you know working with seller clients is extremely impressive so i i really do think you're you're really humble uh you know when we first uh, had a conversation you said you were not a market leader in india i disagree with that i think you definitely are a market leader in india um 
But um, that kind of leads me to, you know, like the next question, which is essentially, you know, the brand that you're with and how has that helped you? And what are some of the challenges essentially of running your own real estate office as well? Because I mean, obviously with more business and with more of a, uh, you know, a structured business comes a little bit more challenges as well. You know, it's not all, you know, sunshines and rainbows, right? You know, it's it's a little bit more business, but there are challenges. So what are some of the challenges of, of running, you know, a larger brand and how has that helped you even with the challenges as well? Sure. So uh, good thing happened to me was uh, associating with this uh, kind of a brand. So uh, as, a, as I said earlier, as a standalone agent, you don't have much of overheads, right? So your office is your car and uh, your phone, right? So on the move, uh, wherever you are, you can do business. So real estate is not a rocket science. Uh, but then again, as I said, you after some time, when the desire is for you to grow um, and uh, when you cannot do it, everything on your own, uh, then you will have to definitely form a team. And uh, uh, this is something which is really challenging in India because, you know, uh, an uh, ABC brand, uh, cannot establish itself or see it cannot attract a resource it cannot attract a talented resource to work with you right so i can open my my own brand like balaji badrana then you know open up an office and ask uh, agents to join me so why would they join me so there has to be a legacy there has to be a uh, you know kind of a brand power and uh, hence the brand that's uh, point number one point number two is it's extremely challenging to operate in a country like India, especially in a city like Bangalore, uh, where people don't care uh, when it comes to uh, professionalism and organize, you know, organized uh, fashion. Uh, not in all the sectors, but especially in real estate. Uh, you have thousands of agents, but very few handful of brands, right? So that clearly shows that, you know, it's, it's anybody and everybody can enter because in, entry is so easy in this business. Exit is even more, even more easy in this business. <laughs> so, uh, so uh, there's absolutely no issues for any agent to work on his uh, on his own and uh, not to get attached to a brand. So, it's it's been an extremely challenging to uh, work on operate on a brand like Colwell Banker here because the brand strength, you know, what not only Colwell Banker for any other brand who's who's predominantly into the franchise model is to attract more agents to work with you, right? That's that's where uh, it was in my mind when I signed up this, okay, let's have an office, let's build a support team, let's have uh, agents partnering with you and let's crack deals every day. As you rightly said, there are no uh, sunshines and butterflies uh, every day. <laughs> so uh, this is uh, something which I faced because I was left alone after taking this brand. So there was nobody would join me. Because I was not able to convince them, you know, why should they join me? It's not only Colwell Banker. Colwell Banker only gives you a, a door entry. So after that, everything needs to be done by you, right? So all the marketing, all the stuff, all the selling, all the lead generations, all the convincing, all the closures, everything needs to be done by you. So why would an agent join and uh, do this and then also pay a royalty on top of it? So it has taken quite a lot of time for me to really establish this uh, in this market. Uh, plus the overheads, plus the uh, building up of uh, the support team. And today I would say that it was, it's one of the best decisions I've made because uh, the kind of the scaling and the uh, kind of branching out which we have done with uh, partnering with partners and people have joined us, uh, joined our brand. And then I operate uh, the way exactly what an American uh, franchise unit will operate. The same way, the support, the, uh, the agents partnering with you and things like that. The same way my office is doing it now. And today we are reaping those benefits, right? So as I said, you know, uh, today we have to say uh, no to tons of leads. So all our partners, including me, we're all very happy uh, the way the lead gen is happening. And the lead gen is happening in such a way that as I rightly said, we are satisfying the uh, searcher's intent and uh, people are exactly calling us what we are looking for. And uh, in that mode, I think uh, I'm able to satisfy my partners and uh, uh, there had been challenge. There is a challenge, but even then, uh, we are able to uh, do it. Wow, that's really that's really impressive that you kind of were able to pick that up, you know, by yourself and actually build a, a successful team. Because you know, and I do understand because when it when it comes to real estate in India, I believe there's no um, requirements, right? Like you said, everybody can just be an individual agent. You have to give them a 
very compelling reason to actually join with your company when they can actually just go out there, make 100% of their commissions and do it by themselves. Where it's, you know, for those listening uh, in the US, it's, it's a lot different than, you know, what we have here where you have to be with a, a brand or another company as, as a real estate agent. So, you know, if you have to figure out, you know, if you have to say one thing that makes you and your company, you know, the prime place for other agents to to work with, you know, what would that be? What is the one thing that, that you were able to provide them that um, other companies are not able and, and you have been very successful at attracting other agents to, your, to work with you? So I would always say this, uh, Kobe, that, you know, play to your strength. Um, so this I have figured out, see, the brand's strength, one needs to understand, see, the brand will merely provide you a label. After that, as I said, you know, you need to do everything yourself. So what is the strength of the particular label? So what is your strength? What is the strength of the particular brand? So that's going to be, that's going to be our play. That's going to be our game. So I think uh, today we have mastered that uh, art of playing to our strength. And that's, that's one of the primary reasons where I'm able to attract uh, more and more agents to come and inquire and join and, uh, you know, work uh, for the brand and work for themselves because the strength is to be a seller's agent. The strength is like, you know, the global uh, uh, non-resident Indians believe in the brand, Uh, Mm -hmm. the global uh, uh, audiences, uh, watch out for what we are trying to say, what we are trying to do, and the success stories, um, what we have sold, and uh, you know what what are the listings we have. That really shows, uh, you know, as a agency, you know how strong you are in your neighborhood market. So, uh, I think the unique uh, thing is, you know, we are playing to our strength, and that strength is, uh, you know, again derived from, uh, you know, uh, our individual personalities and. Uh, you know, again, the clients believe on our strength and uh, those who don't believe, uh, we don't, they, you know, we, we generally don't push them to hire us. And uh, I think that's that's the unique thing. And the most, uh, I would say the most very critical factor is uh, that, you know, once you have the strength and once you push your capabilities, then have patience because real estate is one industry where if you don't have patience, uh, you cannot succeed. When the deals happens, when the transaction takes place, when the offer comes in, when the offer gets accepted, uh, you must have patience. Uh, you should not be the first. You should not be the first person to kick the bucket, right? So you should not be the first person to fire or you know uh, fire a client and then regret later. So this is something which I've learned uh, over the period of time. So I I think uh, this is something which uh, the brand allows you to uh, know what is your strength and the brand uh, strength you'll be implementing back in the market. And then of course, pushing uh, your capability uh, is left to you if you you, you, full, you need to work on your fullest potential and then have patience. And not only as the clients also should have patience and trust and be with you, right? So then only uh, it can happen. And uh, this will happen, uh, this is happening because uh, the clients trust uh, the brand. And uh, the brands allow you to have uh, this kind of a breathing time, this kind of a patience level, so that you know when things happen, you are there in the picture. And how this can happen? This can happen only by way of delivering what is uh, uh, by delivering what is you know what is what the standard agents deliver in the market or and beyond, like you know doing videos, uh, getting the home video tour done, getting a staging or an open house, and uh, uh, printing their properties on your magazines. Uh, circulating newsletters, you know, do extraordinary stuff so that, you know, the seller knows that, yes, you know, the, you guys have been uh, putting uh, your blood and sweat. Now, even then, if it's not selling, let's wait. And that's the, that's the key thing, you know. Uh, he believes you, he waits on you, and then you wait for the ideal buyer to come. Bingo, you do the deal. And that's how we are very unique in the market. Where other agents, I, I felt... Uh, uh, more and more, uh, the world is becoming restless and uh, impatience. And especially when it comes to real estate, you know, people expect everything to happen very quick. Uh, it doesn't happen like that. So that's where our brokerage uh, firm is very, very unique. And uh, we are consistently following this mantra. Uh, and uh, I think uh, that's uh, one of the clients who, the clients who have gone back, they come back to us after six months or a year saying that, can you help us now? We have changed our, we have changed our approach. And now we are aligning with your uh, approach. Let's do this. So that's that's how we are able to, uh, you know, show our uh, uniqueness in the market. Yeah, 
That's really impressive. Again, Baladi, I think what you have been able to do as positioning yourself, you've done something. And I don't know if you know this because I mean, you've, you've been to the States and you've connected with a lot of agents here, but I don't know if you know this, but you've done something where a lot of agents and even in the United States with you know much more favorable conditions when it comes to becoming a seller's agent have not been able to do and are chasing every single day. And that's become exclusive sellers agents and run a team of agents where you're only working with sellers and you're doing it in a condition where I can, you know, I can really say it's, you know, it's going to be a lot worse for, you know, in terms of just the regulations and, you know, what, what people have to actually go through in signing a, a listing agreement uh, in, a, in a market like that. So I think a lot of agents, uh, even in the U S can learn from you and uh, some of the, uh, the practices that you're, you're, um, you're promoting and some of the practices that you're, you're using as well. Uh, because, you know, when you plop them into a worse condition, I promise you, they'll, they'll start complaining. They're not grateful for what they already have. But um, just to, you know, kind of finish off here, and I want to be respectful of your time. I know you're a super busy guy. So looking forward into the future, you know, what's next for you? What's next for your company? And uh, what are some of the new challenges that you guys are looking to take on and, uh, and, uh, and conquer next? So, uh um, yeah, so I, I really thank you for, <laughs> I don't know whether it's it's all, I, I need to truly uh, be more consistent in terms of whatever I'm doing right now and also improvise things on. Um, I've sold a four and a half million dollar home and that got featured in our, uh, you know, the home of the week uh, magazine back in States uh, on a luxury uh, segment. So uh, this is something uh, which I want to do in the future on a regular basis. So not only selling uh, one or two $5 million homes, but on every quarterly basis, not a monthly basis, but every quarterly basis, because the city is exploding, as I said, and uh, uh, more and more uh, buyers are in the luxury segment. And I want to do justice on the luxury segment. And I want to be the man uh, on the luxury segment. So I want to establish myself. I want to establish my brokerage firm as the, go to a uh, center when it comes to the premium and luxury segment of real estate in Bangalore. And uh, I want to uh, also establish the same thing in other areas like, you know, I don't know about, have you heard about this city called Mysore, which is uh, uh, hardly about 200 kilometers from Bangalore, which is a heritage city. We have a lot of palaces, castles and things like wow. that. So we want to establish uh, in niche uh, cities like this, and we want to branch out and uh, we want to hire more uh, like-minded agents in the market and uh, especially empower them with, uh, you know, all the standalone agents, you know, empower them with what a professionalism can uh, get you. And necessarily not mean that, you know, they should join a brand like us, uh, but uh, they can establish uh, themselves in the market in a more professional way and, uh, you know, rise the bar when it comes to delivery uh, of uh, the experience and uh, bring that uh, world-class uh, working atmosphere. I think everybody wins in this market. So my uh, future uh, uh, objective is to uh, do something on the premium and luxury segment where we are market leaders in the city and establish ourselves in other areas and then empower all the standalone agents as giving back to this uh, industry. Wow, that's super impressive. And I'm definitely going to be uh, asking you for a little bit more information on that other city you mentioned with all the castles and palaces. I want to... Uh, you know, learn more about that. So um, after, after our call here, um, but uh, for those of you um, who are listening right now, you know, Balaji, for, for those who are listening, so how can they reach out to you if they have, you know, questions for you or if they have real estate in India that they want to work with somebody, how, how what is the best way for them to reach out um, to you to, to work with you? So uh, Kobe, you, they can reach out to me through my uh, Facebook. Uh, they, they can just search. My name is something unique. It's uh, Balaji Badrinath. And uh, just search for me uh, in Facebook. Uh, probably I can send you the link. You can uh, yeah. put across this to your yeah. audience and uh, they can reach out to me uh, through uh, my email. They can write an email to me, mm-hmm. balaji.b at the rate of coldwellbanker.in. Uh, I'll repeat, balaji.b at the rate of coldwellbanker.in. They can write an email to me. They can also get connected uh, through me uh, to various other social media handles like Instagram, uh, LinkedIn. I'm I'm available everywhere. Okay, awesome. Yeah, I'll make sure to leave your information in the show notes below so that anybody who was looking to work with an exceptional agent like yourself uh, are able to do so. But um, I just want to thank you again, Balaji, for being uh, a guest on the show today. I know you're super busy with a lot. 
you know, a lot that you're dealing with uh, right now, a lot of business. So, you know, thank you for your time and, you know, you, good luck for, you know, the future and the expansion as well. I'm really excited for that. I think you can uh, do a lot of good uh, in the real estate market in India. And for those of you who are listening today, um, thank you for tuning in and I will see you guys next week. Take care, guys. Thank you, Kobe. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate this. Yeah. yeah.